Alright, so I want to give you guys a tour, if you will, of the new square bracket OpenJS grid documentation page. I know I've, this page has looked horrible, and it's still not complete, but it's at least uh, most of the way here. Basically what I wanted to do is give you examples of and code examples of everything that you can do with this grid. So let me kind of give you a style here, and this is actually going to be a how-to video on how to do some of the features of this page. So for example, some of the features include um, we've got this bar at the bottom and it's got a thing that opens and closes over here and what's cool about this is it actually will jump from page to page so so we want to check out the grid with thumbnails we click it and it actually jump us to that point stopping us right at this green bar which is cool and so say I want to jump down to the date ranges section you can come right down here to date ranges okay so that's really cool um, you can do that uh, you can also change the theme of all these grids right so um, so OpenJS grid version 1.7 is going to give you the ability to theme all the grids. So uh, I haven't um, released that yet, but this is going to show you that. And then another feature is there's these play buttons that will kind of give this cube-like effect, if you will. And then these are going to have um, the pop-out video effect. The heck do you call that? Fancy box. <laughs> these are going to be fancy boxed in a little bit. Right now they just say I'm working on the videos because I am, this is not one of them, I should be recording those instead, but I'm going to record this. Anyway, so switch back to the dark theme. Okay, so let's talk about this page a little bit. Um, let's talk about how this is structured. So the way we've got this is, let's take this, page, this part for example. What we've got is a play button for the video that's going to explain the section, and then we've got the title. Then we've got this cool... Um, it's a field set, but it's this opening that shows you this is the example of what we're about to do. And then it shows you the HTML that it took to do it, right here, fully copyable. And then the JavaScript, again, fully copyable. Pretty copyable. There you go. The JavaScript that took to do it. And then the AJAX file that it's called right here, Action AJAX. This is the file, the PHP file that gets used. So it's very clean and easy to understand how this code works and I think you can get lots of examples of here of how to use the grid there's many many things you can do with it and I tried to make it easy to understand that was the goal okay so let's talk about how some of this stuff is made let's talk about this cube like effect to start off with so this is a CSS3 transition okay so the file that we're dealing with ahead of time is let's go to the square bracket page square bracket images and play button okay so as you can see it's a CSS sprite with the button on top and the button on bottom okay so what we do is we would normally go ahead and come down here to let's open up our our CSS file and come over to our play button so normally we have our button okay and then when you do a hover we just change the position so I'm going to delete here because that's what I'm going to show you so if we do that, then we just get a snapping effect, right? So we get the hover, which is a, what a lot of sites have. It's just this hover. What's actually happening, though, is it's actually with zero, in zero milliseconds. It's actually going from zero, x zero, y zero, to y negative 42. So it's actually sliding upwards 42 pixels. So what we do is we add a, a, a dash webkit transition and we're going to use the all property. You could just use background because that's the only thing that we're transitioning. But we're going to use all for this just because it's simpler to write. And we're going to say it's going to take 200 milliseconds. And we want it to ease in and then ease out with this one command. And you can do that for both Mozilla and WebKit. And that will give you that cube effect. And the reason it's here, because if we did it on the hover, it would still work, but it wouldn't do it on the not hover. So for example, it'll, it'll do the cube but then it won't cube back, it'll just snap back. See how it's just snapping back? So it's kind of like it's forever kind of rolling, okay? which is a, an effect in its own, but if you add the, the transitions to the actual element without any modifier like hover, then it actually will do it on hover or not hover, like that. And we could also add another one for active if we wanted. So that's how that's done. Let's talk about these code blocks for a second. These code blocks are really cool, and I really like the way they work. They are I actually couldn't find the website that made these. I found it on one website uh, just that was using the code, and I just kind of took it. Um, it's free. I know it's free, but I don't know 
anything else about it. It's called Pretty, 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 Pretty something. What's it called? Pretty.css, Pretty JavaScript, Pretty Fi, Pretty something. Let me scroll all the way up here and figure out what I called it. Pretty. Pretty Fi. Well, I called it Pretty Fi. Let's go to my util file because I, uh, I made Pretty Fi myself. Pretty Print. It's called Pretty Print. Okay? The way Pretty Print works is you give something. Let's actually inspect the element because I've wrapped it around. So you give an element, you give it a pre, okay? And you, you just put the code that you want in the pre. So for example, let's take this code down here. I've added a pre just like this, and you put inside of the pre your code, and you have to replace the opening square, the opening um, tags with and lt. Uh, semicolon because otherwise it would be interpreted as HTML which we don't want to have happen so you have to do this which is the um, it's ASCII or Unicode or whatever the hell it's called um, of this version of the of the tag right there okay that way it actually translates into a bracket on the page and it's visible that way so the easiest way to do that is so when I create these tables and I was creating this page I would copy this table right here right and I would copy that guy and I would come down here to the table right and I would I would paste the table in just like this, okay, and I would line it up correctly, and then I would hover over the whole thing, and we would replace opening bracket with and LT exclamation point, and make sure your scope is set to selection, and just hit all, and then that would do it for you, and it's done. I don't have to do anything else, except for the fact that I need to change this to ajax.php because, well, don't worry about it. <laughs> so that's how... Uh, these are formed, and, and and I and the way you actually you do the JavaScript for this is you actually just call and again I have a wrapper I'll explain that in a second, but you just call um, dot, you call pretty print, and obviously you need to have the the JavaScript class just took my look at my source to grab it. You just call pretty print. So what my wrapper is doing though is it's actually saying okay we want to do a pretty print, we want to do some code, but I want to wrap it with something. So if you look at all my styles, I've got this thing above it. So I can also, along with at that, I can add a title. So title equals, um, this is a title, right? And this is on, what is this on? This is on the, the intro grid, right? So I already have, so, so you can see what this is my title. So it actually add, can add a title and it wraps it in this field set, which gives it that effect. So let me undo that, um, but, and I'll show you how that works. So instead of calling pretty print, I'm actually calling pretty fi, which is a function that I've made. You can grab that as well. That it, it grabs each pretty print uh, tag, and it actually will, if there's a title set, it'll actually create the h1 tag automatically, and then if the um, and then it creates the field set, and then if the file is set, then it'll create a legend. And the legend is actually if you know how field sets work, this is the legend actually. So this, this where it's separated by the line, that's all automatic for field sets. And all I've done is style it, adding some border radius, and actually setting the border widths of the rest of them to none. So that's how, this is all just CSS that makes it look this way. It's pretty cool though. And then I actually um, set the HTML, so then I actually create a new pretty print class, and I actually use the HTML that I took, and I actually replace the main element. So I'm actually recreating the pretty print all together, but with my new crap. And then I'm calling the pretty print class on the new elements that are there, which turns them into code. So that's how the code works. And how this thing works over here, well, you know this bar is just a fixed bar at the bottom, so that's pretty pretty standard. But how this works, um, I'm actually not typing all that out either. So that's actually another cool feature. So if I actually go to the main page here and I look at that bar, you can see I just have this UL empty. And what I'm doing is as I go through the page here, I've got these A names set up throughout and that's because I'm doing these jumps where I'm doing you know how an anchor works you type in something it takes you to that place on the page so I have those set up but I don't actually have the link set up I'm doing that automatically so if you see the a name here you can actually crawl a little bit in and find uh, this text right here which is which is the text that uh, I want the link to be called so I'm, di I'm gonna grab all of these then dynamically grab all this, and then dynamically create all the A tags in this menu over here. So let's take a look at how that's done as well. So if we go up here to talk A, right, talk A. So actually before that, so what this does is this grabs all the A names. So at first it grabs the hash, which is basically 
what the name is. So name equals something. So that's what this hash is. And then we actually grab the name. We say this dot next find h1 text. So yours is going to be different for every scenario, but I'm just locating that text that I just pointed out. And then all I'm going to do is append to my TOC, which is the UL. And I'm just going to append an LI with my href and then pound and then the hash that I found. And I'm just going to name it whatever I named it. So whenever I add something new, it's going to automatically add it to my table of contents, which is really nice to do. So I don't have to keep updating it. So for example, if I go in here and add another section, so I'll just take this base section and I'll duplicate it right here underneath. And then I'll just call this section um, new section and then I'll call this you know new section I'll just do that and I hit refresh and then now you see I've actually got a new section here and it actually automatically will scroll there and has the example and everything so all very easy to create this code style page um, with that tool very nice um, now how that scrolling, obviously you're curious how the scrolling works. Well, I did a tutorial on that before, so I'll kind of run over that script real quick, but I'm not going to really get into it because I already did that once. Um, and I'll link you to that other video, but how this works is very simple. Okay, so basically, yeah, this whole live, that whole section, I don't know why I skipped over that. All right, so basically we're going to catch an, a click on all the A tags inside of the table of contents. Okay, and I'm doing live because don't forget they don't exist before the page starts. Okay, so I have to do live because the, the handlers need to be attached after they get attached to the DOM. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is going to say if this dot hash, meaning if there's a hashtag and there will be a hashtag, it's going to cut off the hashtag so I've got the ID and then it will select the element basically by going back. It's basically going to do a jQuery selector using the A name to that hash. This is very by basically the reverse of the previous step. And then I'm going to create calculate the two position by saying, okay, we know what that element is, that A name element. We know and now we're just gonna calculate the position top. And this is just standard jQuery to calculate the position top. And then the key here is that we have to animate both the body and the HTML. Animate. We're doing stop so that the page doesn't go haywire on us. If we click a bunch of stuff all at once like here, I'll show you. If we get rid of that and we click a bunch of links all at once, it's just going to, you know, so I've just clicked it four times. The page is, I'm not even doing anything. And the page just flips out. So we had that stop in here so that you can't flip out the page. It'll wait for you to finish and it'll just stop right away, which is really nice. So what it does is then it says, sets the scroll top, okay, of both the body and the HTML to that position of the element. It does it over a thousand milliseconds and it does it at this ease out expo so it slows into the element. So that and then we return false so that we don't actually do the jump. Okay? Another thing is that this also makes it so the hashtag doesn't show up in the URL. You may or may not want that. Anyway, that's how the jumping and smooth scrolling is done. Okay? So all in all, that's how this page is built. Um, I'm really happy with it and I think it's going to be really cool once I add these videos, which I'll be doing either later or whatever. But I think, um, yeah, I think this is a really great way to build a page, and I think it, it helps a lot, and I hope you guys get a really great understanding for how these grids work.